Retina Rounds, episode number seven, Diabetic Tractional Retinal Detachment. How do you tackle fibrovascular membranes with a cutter and forceps? Today, I want to welcome our guest surgeon, Dr. Basil Anwar from Bangladesh. This is exactly what the Retina Rounds community is all about. Surgeons from all over the world sharing their videos so that we can learn from each other. And so I want to thank Dr. Anwar for sharing his video on today's episode. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into Dr. Anwar's case. Uh, it looks like here he's uh, using a 23 gauge setup for his vitrectomy and starting with an anterior vitrectomy. Sometimes the anterior vitreous hemorrhage can be very severe and cleaning up that view is obviously important to be able to continue with the case. This patient has a cataract, so it's certainly reasonable uh, in some cases to even do uh, cataract surgery with a lens implantation to really clean up the anterior vitreous hemorrhage. All right, so now, now Dr. Onward is doing a very important first step, which is to segment the vitreous, the, the vitreous adhesions to that posterior membrane there near the optic nerve from the anterior vitreous. So he's going around 360 degrees and segmenting that, and that's really important for two reasons. One is uh, when he is working posteriorly, he want, doesn't want to be exerting any traction anteriorly. And two, it can help him to identify planes better. In fact, many times as you're doing this, there can be a partial PVD, and this process can help to propagate that PVD to make sure that you're in the proper plane. All right now he's using some triamcinolone. This is also very important in diabetic cases because as many of you know, diabetic vitreous is highly skittic. So there can be multiple layers uh, to the vitreous and you wanna make sure that when you're working, you've elevated up the cortical vitreous gel. And now he's uh, tackling this membrane posteriorly and doing another very important step, which is to segment the membrane 360 degrees. So there are vitreous adhesions all the way around uh, this membrane, and some of them can even be glued down to the adjacent retina. So by going around 360 degrees and elevating the vitreous, he's gonna create space so that he can get under that membrane and dissect it off the surface of the retina. Now, uh, now he's using forceps to lift up that membrane. And you wanna be really careful here, and he's doing a great job of just carefully lifting up these membranes, not exerting too much traction on the underlying retina and now lifting up at the optic nerve. And this is, this is generally uh, a very good, good way to make sure that you're in the right plane. The downside, of course, is that if you do get bleeders over the optic nerve, it's not something that you can cauterize. You'd have to stop bleeding there if it's really vigorous with a tamponade pressure, uh, which in these ischemic guys is not ideal, but um, it does allow you to get into the right plane. And you can see here as he's lifting up, he can see, um, uh, you can see where there are these fibrovascular pegs. So fibrovascular pegs are where the, the trunk of this membrane, the, the vascular trunk is coming up out of the retina and then proliferating almost like a sheet on the surface. And so by lifting up, he can see where those adhesions, where those pegs are. And the goal of this surgery is to break down this, this, um, this fibrovascular membrane, this sheet, down into bite-sized pieces. So breaking it down uh, where those pegs are into uh, smaller chunks, which can be then delaminated or at least uh, fully segmented so they don't contract and cause more bleeding. So now he's lifting up and you can see here, there's a number of clues where these fibrovascular pegs are. There's, there's you can actually see a space right here. So you can, he can actually introduce a cutter and actually cut this membrane into two, two pieces, um, an upper and a lower piece, and then further break that down into smaller and smaller pieces. Um, the, the, other uh, the other clue here is that you can see that there is some tenting up of the retina. And so those stress lines, those, those stress lines sort of point towards where the fibrovascular contraction is. And that can be another clue as to where those pegs are. So uh, again, you want to lift up this, these membranes so that you can see where your spaces are. You can see where you can introduce a cutter and you can see where you can break this down into more manageable pieces. All right, so now using the cutter to, um, to uh, segment, as we talked about earlier, and you can see he's going, the, the membrane is loose in multiple areas, and so he's using the cutter to debulk it, to break it down into smaller pieces. You can actually see the, the mouth of the cutter underneath that fibrovascular tissue. And that's, a, that's usually a, 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 a very good sign that you can safely cut in this location. If you can see through a membrane, through the cutter, you're probably not engaging in retina. And so uh, he's doing a very nice job here of carefully using that cutter to uh, almost like a, like a hook to get underneath that membrane, identify the space, and then, and then very carefully uh, tapping on the uh, foot pedal to, to engage the cutter and segment uh, this membrane into now two, um, two pieces. 
Now it looks like he's going to try to um, to delaminate this peg. And uh, you could certainly leave this alone. You can cauterize it if it's if it's oozing and just leave it alone. But he's opting to uh, to go ahead and delaminate this, which is basically where this whole fibrovascular membrane is is removed right at the trunk. And uh, so this is a very, very nice example of this technique where the cutter is put sort of wedged right underneath uh, the, the junction between the fibrovascular membrane and the retina so that the butt of the cutter is almost uh, holding the underlying retina back. So it looks like uh, there's some cautery that's being done here. There may be some oozing vessels. Uh, and, uh, you know, using the cautery um, is, is, is important. You have to be able to go back and forth between the cutter, forceps, and cautery to deal with oozing vessels. If you don't deal with oozers uh, throughout the case, then that blood, which is very rich in fibrin, can almost be like another set of another membrane that you have to deal with. So really important to deal with uh, hemostasis as it arises, not waiting too long and then uh, potentially dealing with yet another membrane that you have to lift up off the retinal surface. Now the, the bleeding is under control, the, the membranes have been removed, and now Dr. Onwar is applying some PRP. This is obviously a very important step to help prevent of uh, ongoing bleeding. Um, some patients will also, you know, may also benefit from getting an anti-VEGF injection at the end of surgery, but PRP really is uh, an important step here to uh, get this disease uh, uh, to a quiescent state and help decrease the chance for more proliferations and more bleeding. Now the, uh, the, pos the location of the spots and, um, and the intensity of the burns differs a little bit from how I approach things. I tend to stay outside of the, the, the major vascular arcades when doing PRP. I like to go as anteriorly as possible. This is the best opportunity to get that anterior PRP in. And my burns tend to be just a bit, uh, uh, not, not, not quite as, as hot white uh, as these are, uh, but um, still, uh, you know, it's very important to do this. And, and Dr. Anwar is really demonstrating this uh, very nicely. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and go to an air fluid exchange, and uh, he's using the, the cutter here to uh, to initiate the air fluid exchange, bringing that uh, air meniscus down towards the optic nerve. And um, you can see that the light reflex changes. So when his cutter is in the water, there's that little that's a little sh sh uh, shimmer of the light reflex. So he knows he's in water, and then when it uh, changes again, he knows he's in air. Uh, now using the soft tip to kind of really dry the retina. It looks like there might be a small iatrogenic break there, just nasal to the optic nerve. So he's just going to dry up all that preretinal fluid over the optic nerve and then drain any fluid that might be underneath the break so that's nice and dry. And then uh, now he's going to be able to apply laser around that break. Um, you know, obviously the, the laser retinopexy is going to be more of a, more of a confluent uh, three-row burn around the retinal break as opposed to the PRP, which the spacing is going to be anywhere from half a, half a burn width to a burn width uh, of spacing. All right, so once that's done, you can see the confluent laser now nasal to the optic nerve. One last air fluid exchange, and, um, and that should complete the case here. I, you know, under air, I like to even do more PRP anteriorly um, or even with scleral depression. Looks like he's choosing to use uh, silicone oil here as a tamponade agent. Uh, given, given that the break is more posterior, certainly would be reasonable to use, use uh, gas as well, uh, especially given how thorough, how well done the, um, the dissection was. All right, and now he's uh, sewing his, his uh, sclerotomy shut. Very important to do this when you're using oil. Subconjunctival oil can be really, um, really uh, irritating and pro-inflammatory in the subconjunctival space. And he's doing a really uh, nice, uh, nice technique here of closing it. So he's placing an X-type suture, so sort of pre-placing a suture before removing the trocar so that he can immediately close that sclerotomy and not lose, uh, not lose any oil. Here are your take-home points. When dissecting fibrovascular membranes in diabetic tractional retinal detachments, it's important to make sure that the vitreous is elevated around the membranes 360 degrees. This is going to help to decrease the risk of uh, developing an iatrogenic break. The use of a combination of forceps and the cutter is really important. Forceps can be used to elevate membranes and to identify spaces. The cutter can be used to segment and delaminate. As was shown in Dr. Onwar's case, when segmenting, if you can see through the fibrovascular membrane through the mouth of the cutter, typically that's going to be uh, safe to cut with the cutter. 
Uh, and when delaminating, the best technique, once that membrane has been freed of the surrounding retinal tissue and vitreous 360 degrees, the cutter can be wedged in between the fibrovascular membrane and the retina with the butt of the cutter uh, pushing gently against the retina and the mouth of the cutter directed towards the fibrovascular membrane. Then a gentle tap of the foot pedal will engage that, uh, that membrane uh, and result in successful delamination. And then finally, segmentation re refers to uh, the isolation of fibrovascular pegs. And so uh, when you have a large fibrovascular membrane, oftentimes there are multiple pegs underneath and segmentation really is the process by which those, those pegs, those, the, the trunks of those fibrovascular membranes are isolated from each other and isolated from the surrounding vitreous. Delamination, on the other hand, involves trimming or removing fibrovascular pegs from their point of origin in the retina. That can be done uh, with the vitreous cutter, as was shown in this case. It can also be done with scissors. And in cases where the retina is detached, such as a, tr a combined tractional and regmatogenous retinal detachment, sometimes bimanual technique and other maneuvers are necessary in order uh, to successfully delaminate these membranes. If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.